Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, we will implement the functionality to draw the path the user ran. And we will also worry about the camera animation so that the camera is always at the last path point. So we will just observe all the changes from the live data we implemented in the last video. First of all, I will create a global variable for our is tracking state and for our path points list. So let's create a private var here is tracking, which will set to false initially because initially we are not tracking the location. And we will have a private var for our path points, which will set to a mutable list of polyline. So nothing different than we did in the last video. But now I want to add a function here to draw a polyline. And now we have to think about when do we want to draw a line. So in the end, our actual line is just a whole bunch of connections between single points. And we always want to connect the last two locations in our polyline list when we get a new location. So that means whenever our path points list changes, so whenever we observe a change on that, we want to connect the last point of that list with the second last point. So I want to create a function, a private function add latest polyline, which we'll use to connect those two last points of our path points list. And first of all, we need to check if there are actually um, polylines inside of our polyline list instead of our path points list. So we check if path points dot is not empty. So if we have elements in that list, and what we also need to check is if there are more than one element in the last list of our path points. So in the last polyline, which means the current polyline we are tracking. And we can check that by writing path points dot last to reference the last polyline, the current polyline we're tracking, and check if their size is greater than one. So if there are at least two elements in that. And now we need to reference those two last coordinates inside of the last list of our path points. So inside of our current polyline. And for that, I will create a val pre last lat long. So the second last coordinate inside of our last list. And we can get that by writing path points dot last and then index path points dot last dot size minus two. So just the second last element inside of the last list. And now we have the second last element. So we also need to get the last element. That is a little bit easier. So just write val last let long is equal to path points dot last. So again, that's just the polyline we're currently tracking. And we want to refer to the last coordinate of that polyline. So we write last again. And now we somehow need to define how our polyline should actually look like. So we need to define the color and how wide we actually want to have our polyline. And we also need to define from which coordinate to which we want it. And for that, we need to define polyline options. So we write val polyline options is equal to polyline options dot color. Here we can set the color for our polyline. And for that, I want to create a constant in our constants file. First of all, a const val polyline color, which I'll set to color dot red. And we'll have a const val for polyline width, which I'll set to um, 8f. Then we can go back to our tracking fragment and assign those constants that we just created. So for the color, I will choose polyline color. Then for the width, I'll choose polyline width. And now we need to add those two coordinates we just created. So the second last coordinate instead of our last polyline and the last element of that. So just those two um, coordinates we want to connect here with that polyline. So we simply specify add. We want to connect our pre last lat long coordinate with our last lat long coordinate. So and now we can just take our map object that we got here asynchronously and draw that polyline on it. So we can simply write map question mark dot add polyline and pass our polyline options. 
But now we need another function regarding those polylines. Because as you maybe know, when we rotate our device, then our activity is recreated. And that means that all the data is lost inside of our fragment. And since we use MVVM, that is not a problem because we immediately get the data from our live data. But we also need to worry about adding those polylines again, because this function is only to connect the two last polylines of our polyline list. But this function won't draw all of our polylines on the map again when we rotate the device. And for that, we need to create another function, which I'll call private function add all polylines. And that function is very simple because all we want to do here is we want to loop through our path points list. So for each polyline in our path points, we just want to create a new polyline options object again. So val polyline options and set it to polyline options. We want to set the color to our polyline color again and the width to our polyline width. And then we can simply use add all to add a whole bunch of coordinates. So as you can see, that now takes a list of flat long coordinates and that is exactly what a single polyline of us represents. So we can simply pass our polyline here and it will automatically connect all of those points that we pass here. So after that, we just need to call our map again and add that polyline we just created. And that's already it for that at all polylines function. Now the next step is to write a function that moves the camera to the user's position whenever there is a new position in our polyline list, in our path points list. So I will create a function here, a private function called move camera to user. And in here we again want to check if there is at least one coordinate inside of our path points list. So if our path points dot is not empty, and if our path points dot last, so the current polyline is also not empty. So if we have at least one coordinate coordinate inside of that path points list, then we want to move that camera to the user. And we can very easily do that by using our map and call dot animate camera. Here we need to pass a camera update factory dot new let long zoom. So basically we just want to animate a zoom to the user's position. And here we need to pass the coordinate to which we want to animate that. That is just our path points dot last dot last. So just the last coordinate inside of our path points list because that is the latest coordinate we got from our tracking service. And now we also need to pass a zoom. So basically how far the zoom should be. And for that I will create another constant in our constants file constval map zoom and I'll set it to 15f. You can just experiment with that and set a value that is fine for you. So I'll just pass map zoom here and then we're good to go. And now that's already it for our drawing functionality. But what we also need to do is we actually need to observe the data from our servers and react to those changes. And for that I will create a function again, a private function update tracking which will take the new tracking state. So is tracking, which is a Boolean. And inside of this function, we just want to update our UI regarding this is tracking state here. So first of all, we just want to set our global is tracking variable. So this dot is tracking to the new is tracking. So just update that one. And then we want to check if we're not currently tracking. In that case, we know that we are currently in the pause state. So we want to set the text of our button toggle run. So button toggle run dot text is equal to start. So we simply resume the service. And we also want to set the visibility of our button finish run to visible because when we pause the run, we want to be able to finish it too. So view dot visible. And in case we are currently tracking, we want to do the opposite. So we want to set the text of our button toggle run to stop. And we want to set the visibility of our button finish run to view.gone. So now we also need a functionality to toggle our run. So just to start our tracking service if it is currently in the stopped or paused state and to stop it if it is currently running. So we create a private function toggle run 
doesn't take any parameters here. That is a very short function. And we check if we're currently tracking. If we are, we want to pause the service now. So we call send command to service, action pause service. And else, if we're not currently tracking and we click on that button, that means we want to resume the service or run it. Then we send a command to the service, which is action start or resume service. And now the very last function for this video is to create a function to subscribe to our observers, to subscribe to the live data objects in our service, which is also a private function, subscribe to observers. Doesn't take any parameters. And here we just want to call our tracking service dot is tracking, which is our live data. Observe on that, pass our view lifecycle owner. That is always the case when you observe live data in a fragment, then you need to pass the view lifecycle owner. And we pass an observer block here in which we just call our update tracking function with the new tracking state. And then we'll also have to um, observe our path point list. So tracking service dot path points dot observe. Also pass our view lifecycle owner and an observer block. In here we want to set our global path points list to it. So just the new path point list. And we want to call our add latest polyline function. So we want to connect the two latest um, coordinates inside of our polyline list because when this observer gets called we know there is a new location tracked coming from our service and then we simply want to draw a new line and we also want to animate the camera to the user so move camera to user function and that is basically it now we can call that subscribe observers function in our on view created function subscribe to observers and then we want to call our add all polylines function in our get map async block here because that is only called um, when the fragment is created. So when we rotate it or device that gets called. So, and then we simply add all the lines already in our list. And finally, instead of just starting our service when we click on button toggle run, we just want to toggle the run now. So we simply call toggle run. And by the way, I don't think we already implemented the functionality in our tracking service to actually pause it, but that is super simple. Let's quickly do that in our tracking service class. Just create a function here to pause it, private function, pause service. And for now, that is only a single line in which we will use our is tracking live data and post the value false. And then just call that function whenever we receive that action pause service intent here. So just call pause service. And let's actually also copy that start foreground service function for now instead of the else block here, because otherwise we won't be able to resume our service. Later on, we will implement that differently. But just to test that for now, I will leave that inside of the else block too. Let's actually run our app now and see if everything is working. Let's open our emulator options and our actual emulator, of course. And I will play my current route that I saved here. I showed you in the last video how to set up that route. Click on play route, click on continue, start a new run. And if we now click on start, then we zoom in to the current user position. And as you can see, we are drawing, we are drawing the line where the user currently runs. And if we now click on stop, then you can see we toggle the views here on the button here is start again, and we are able to finish the run. If we now click on start again, then we're going to start a new polyline. As you can see, so our polyline list is working perfectly fine. We can stop it again and resume it. Then a new line will start and so on. So I hope you liked this video. If so, please give it a like and comment below what you think about this, if it helped you. And also make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And yeah, see you in the next video. Have a good day. Bye bye.